out there and welcome to my channel. My name is Milesy and today I want to take a little bit of time to show you how I film my embroidery. This is one of those things where it's not necessarily a tutorial because you will probably find a way that you like it a little bit better, but I just want to show you the process of how I go through that. From everything from hooking up your camera to actually doing the technical bits on your computer. So let's go ahead and get started. So this is what the overall setup looks like. Sometimes there's a computer monitor over here while I am streaming, but I have my floor stand, my camera, some alt lights. I have three of them. Oh, it doesn't want to focus. Okay. Uh, I have to have those on or else you can't see over here because there's a lot of black stuff, but I have the two lights there and then the third up top. And what that does is if you look at the actual embroidery right here, there's no shadows on it coming from any direction. So the more lights that you can have in the more angles that you can have, the better it will be. Eventually, I want to get some overhead lights up here instead because this over the shoulder thing is kind of crap, but it works. And I don't know if you can tell, probably not. Let me get behind here. That's what that's for. Not really, but that's what I use it for. Uh, you don't actually want to have them shining at your work. I kind of shine them away. And I know it's really difficult to tell. You can kind of see there if I do that. It's shined away from my work. It's not shined at it. And that gives you the best, uh, smoothest lighting without any harsh shadows. And then important is right here I have a keyboard. That's very important. It's taped to my chair very awkwardly, but we will come to that later. But what you need to do the actual filming is you need some sort of a stand. Uh, I have my awful Edmund stand. You need a camera. I strongly suggest a hardlined webcam. I use the Logitech C615. Let me see if I can get a good shot of it right there. And it is attached to a six foot long extension cable right there and I've tied that off so that it doesn't accidentally come untied or unconnected when I'm using it. Disconnected, that's the word. And what we want to do is we want to have our camera looking down at the stitching. Uh, the reason I recommend the webcam over using your phone or using a smaller camera that's dedicated to filming is that you can film as much as you want on a webcam. With your phone, you're limited to space. Your phone is also going to be pretty heavy and you want it to be as light as possible. Uh, and with a lot of regular, just straight up cameras, there is a hard 30 minute film limit on them for tariff reasons that I don't understand. Uh, it has something to do with exports and taxes and tariffs being higher on video cameras than photo cameras. Uh, so there's a hard limit on what cameras can do. And then I have this, this is called a scissor arm and it was designed for cameras, for webcams specifically. Uh, it's kind of hard to see. Let me see if I can make it focus. It has that screw and most webcams you will find a thing on the bottom that will let you attach it to a tripod. So it has the same kind of screw there. And it has this neat little clamp right here. Try to get a good angle of it. That just clamps right onto my stand. And this wasn't meant for a stand, this was meant for a desk, but it obviously works. There was no modifications. I kind of thought there would need to be at first, but there really wasn't any modifications needed. It went right onto the stand very easily with very little grief. And it can come off and go on and go on to other stands as well, or go wherever I want it to. And it's fully articulated. I have everything uh, bolted down pretty tightly though, so that it doesn't move while I was recording. We were doing a live stream today, so that's what that is. And going back to why you want a webcam and not your phone for another reason, is the webcam weighs nothing. It weighs almost nothing, like a couple of ounces, so that when you're doing this business, as soon as you stop moving the frame, maybe you bumped it or something, the webcam stops moving. If you've got a phone that weighs half a pound on the end of this, it's going to go all over the place and it's not going to quit wiggling. It's going to want to keep falling down no matter how hard you 
tighten these bolts because it wasn't meant for a phone. But I found that this is the best way to get your shots very even uh, because you can articulate this. You can just set it and forget it. You never have to deal with it, especially if you only ever do one piece at a time, which um, we probably all know that I don't. But that's the basic physical setup. Now let's hop over to the computer and I will show you the technical aspect of filming your embroidery. Okay, so now we're using OBS Studio, which is some free software that will do an awful lot for you if what you need it to do is record or film something. And this will work with your webcam or any other devices that you have plugged into your computer. And the first thing that we actually need to do is set ourselves up a new profile. And you can see all of these profiles that I have set up right here. Uh, and these are just different saved settings that I have for different reasons that I need to film. So I have speed stitch recording and tutorial recording. These two, for instance, are identical except tutorial recording records at a higher frame rate than the speed stitch. And I'll get into that a little bit later on. So we're going to create a brand new one because you won't have any profiles when you start. And we'll just call it example. There we go. And now it says up here that we are in profile example. And I have all these scenes down here. Again, you won't have any, so just pretend this is empty. I don't want to delete these because I use them every day and I don't want to set them back up. So we're going to hit add and just create an example scene right there. And now we have nothing. And this is what it will look like when you first start using it. So what we need to do is set up a source. So we're going to hit the plus button right here. And you want a video capture device. That's a fancy word for webcam. And I have my existing one set up. So I'm going to use one of those. Uh, you won't have anything in this list though. So you will stay on create new and name your capture device. And I'll show you what that looks like. So we'll just go with the default and we'll hit OK. And it will give you a list of the different webcams. I don't want to uh, fiddle with my stuff like that though, so I'm actually just going to add one of my existing ones. That's fine. So we have that, and then I'll come in here and show you the properties again. So this is the screen that you will get, and you have the drop down. It will let you pick which ones you use. This is all of the webcams that are installed on your computer and you want to have this, it will be set to device default and you'll see what that looks like there. That is my camera's default. It is not the most that it can output though. Um, that's very small, that's very hard to see. So we're going to go back to custom and we want it to be at 1920 by 1080. You want to match the output FPS and then everything else you can leave alone. Now, the video won't necessarily be nice and perfect out of the box either, so we are going to click on Configure Video, and that will bring up your webcam software. Uh, what you want to make sure is that it will have the auto autofocus. You want to make sure that is off. Uh, if the autofocus is on, it won't necessarily find the best focus, and it might want to focus on your hands, and we don't want that. So I'm going to move this out of the way so that we can see what I'm doing a little bit better here with the rest of this. So we can see that I've dialed in the focus and it looks really nice here about right there. That's about as good as it's going to get. And this isn't as nice as it could be. I don't have all of my lights on because there's no need for me to have them on right now. So we're going to go into advanced settings and just click on restore to defaults. It probably already is, but just to make sure, go ahead and click on that. And you'll notice that it, with the Logitech, there are a lot of things that are selected automatically. My other webcam has a lot of preset defaults as well. So the first one that we want to turn off is the automatic white balance. Because as you can see right here, it is pretty green and nasty and that's not a nice color. Uh, the other reason you want to turn it off is because when you're stitching and you have your hand in frame or as you're adding more colors, you are removing white pixels from the frame and with each white pixel that is removed from the frame, the camera will try to redefine what white is. It can give you some really bad flickering and flashing that can give your audience seizures, so we don't want to do that. We're going to turn that off. 
and then we're just going to slide this down and find a nicer white so about right there is where we want it and for the same reason as before we don't want it automatically setting the exposure or the gain or the brightness anything that can determine the color or the brightness of the camera we don't want the webcam to be determining what that is on its own so I'm just going to fiddle with these until I find something that looks nice and you don't necessarily want this to be pure white even though the fabric is you do want to be able to see some of that definition in the fabric that's just nicer for the audience and you can see here that my camera is not the nicest it's not the crispest the video isn't as clear as it could be I would love to get a new one in the future but this is all I can afford right now but we'll just kind of dial that in and we'll say that's good that's fine and now we have the camera ready to go we don't need to mess with the mixer in fact when I'm recording I turn off all of my sound both from the uh, webcam itself I actually use an external microphone and I turn off the desktop audio so we're going to go into settings right here in general we don't really need to mess around with too much we have our source alignment snapping which just determines how uh, your video or your other elements on the screen behave uh, but that's really the only thing you probably need to deal with in general settings in stream this is for if you're live streaming so we have your uh, built-in streaming services which are anything that OBS already knows how to deal with, Twitch, YouTube, Smashcast, whatever that is, a whole bunch of other things. If you want to stream to like Picarto or something else, you would go to Custom Stream Server. And somewhere in the settings of all of these sites, they will give you all of the information you need for these. So we don't really need to deal with that right now. I will do another video on streaming in the future though. For output, we actually want to move this to Advanced because this is where we're going to determine how OBS behaves with our video and with our stream. So I'll show you how to set up both because when you set up streaming, you can automatically import these over for recording and then you don't have to change it depending on what you're doing and it just makes things a little bit easier. So the encoder, you can leave that as the default and you can leave that checked. We don't want to rescale the output, that's fine. We don't want to mess with the audio track, so this entire first section is fine. The uh, rate control, we can leave that at CBR. The bit rate, I like to have closer to about 4000 when I'm streaming, and that just makes things go a little bit more smoothly. And we don't need to use a custom buffer size because we're not going to be doing anything too demanding, so that's fine. The keyframe interval, this one is pretty important for streaming. And this is how often OBS sends the website that you're streaming to information about your video. Uh, YouTube, for instance, likes you to send it every four seconds or faster. Uh, I found that if you leave it on zero, it goes at about 10 seconds. So I'm going to put that at two. That way, every two seconds, it sends YouTube information. The CPU usage, uh, that will start off on very fast. I actually like to put it on the fastest. And the fastest you set your preset, uh, the easier it is on your computer, basically. And then we don't need to mess with the rest of them. So then we can go into recording, and if we just go on standard, that's fine. Uh, we can leave the recording path to the default, which is videos, or you can click on browse and determine where you want your recorded video to go. And you can pick that like you can pretty much anything else. So that's fine. Uh, you can decide whether or not you want to generate file names without spaces. We don't really need to deal with that. And then for the encoder, we're just going to use the live stream settings. So we don't need to mess with really too much on this screen. The important thing, though, is the recording format. And it defaults to FLV because FLV is the safest format to record to. Uh, you have all of these other ones, and the tendency might be to go, oh, well, mp4 is the standard that's what youtube likes that's what my video editor likes i'm going to go with mp4 but then you get this really loud warning message right here that pretty much tells you not to use this uh and the reason that you don't want to use this is because mp4 is not what's called crash proof whereas flvs and mkvs are 
and what that means is that if your computer has an issue, if OBS crashes, if your webcam crashes, if you lose power, if for any reason OBS stops recording, you will lose your file if it is an MP4. Uh, you will not be able to recover that, and that could be potentially hours of video that are just lost and you'll never get those again. So I actually like to just leave it on uh, either FLV or MKV. The only real difference there for you is that MKV will give you previews in the file explorer. So if I come up here, you can see the difference here. The FLVs are a traffic cone and the MKVs, I can actually see where the files are. So that is the only difference there. Uh, that's the only reason why you would choose one over the other. And then we don't need to deal with audio or the replay buffer. We don't really need to deal with audio in here. And then video is another one that's pretty important. The base canvas resolution should be at 1080p. That is the standard these days for video. It's nice and easy to see. It's nice and big. It will fit on most monitors very easily. So that's what we want to leave it at. As the output resolution, we don't actually want to scale that. It wants to default to scaling it down, but this is such intricate, fiddly work that we want the audience to be able to see as much of it as possible, which is why we want to record at 1080p. If your computer can handle recording at a higher output, then you can do that. Mine cannot. Uh, there are some people that can record in 4K. Uh, if you have a nice enough webcam that can do that, and that would look amazing. Um, I'm using some pretty bargain stuff here, so I just record at 1080p. The downscale filter, since we're not actually downscaling, doesn't matter. And then the FPS value, we can leave at 30, because we are going to be speeding this up. Um, depending on how long it takes you to do your project, you could speed this up up to uh, 20, what is it? 20,000 times is how fast some of my videos get sped up. Uh, someone was speculating that I might have sped it up about 20 times. That's, that is nowhere near as fast as you will need to speed this up. So 30 is fine. I will go to 60 FPS when I'm doing tutorials because it makes the video just a little bit more clear. Now for hotkeys, this is actually important. I showed you my keyboard over there by my recording suit, uh, chair, which was kind of in an awkward place, but that's fine. But that's because OBS has a hotkey to stop and start recording. So whenever I press that key, it will automatically stop and it will automatically start. I have a key, uh, I have a key bound, so I'm going to use a different one. But like, let's say if we hit um, P, and every time we hit P, it will stop and start the recording for us. And you'll do that, that way you're not picking up any dead air, you're not messing with changing your floss, you're not getting a new cup of tea, the kids came in, they want your attention, you're not having to record any of that. And that's important because later on, when we are editing this, we want to make this as quick and easy to edit as possible. When I first started out doing this, I recorded everything. It would take about 80 hours of time to record, and then it would take just as long to edit. By doing it this way, I can edit a speed stitch in about a half hour. So it's taken so much time off of it by, by being able to do this. So get yourself an extension cord, get yourself a second keyboard. This will make your life so much easier. And then in advanced, we don't really need to change anything again. So we'll just hit apply and okay. And there we go. Uh, hopefully you guys found something helpful in that. I know I can really ramble on sometimes, so I'll try to edit that down in those places. But that's just a little look at how I film my embroidery. And I also next week will do something on how I turn that embroidery into a finished video from the start to finish. So hopefully you guys found this helpful. Uh, if you didn't, or if you have any questions, please leave that down in the comments below. Uh, or if you did, that's cool too, either way. Uh, but I don't like this end ending. Ah. But there we go. Hopefully you guys found something in that useful. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please put those down below and I will get to them as soon as I can. Uh, next week I'm probably going to do a video on how to turn everything that you've just filmed into a uh, stitch video, into an embroidery video, whatever you want to do with that. 
Uh, but until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye!